All right, welcome back to Adobe's Lightroom Classic. And today we're gonna to be finally taking a look at the develop module and how to tone an image. Now this is going to be a multi-part series. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how the develop module works and all the ins and outs. But then as we proceed through the series, I'm gonna show you actually how you tone and what to look for in conjunction in using the develop module, which is a completely different idea. But first, before we get into that, I forgot to show you guys something last week. So what we're gonna do is we're in the library module. I'm just gonna show you really quickly this little compare and contrast thing. So we have this image of this woman up here. And if you notice over here, we have this little X and Y and this little button right here. We're gonna do the X and Y first, and this is just a compare view. So what I'm gonna do on a Mac, you're gonna hold the command key and on a PC, you'll hold control. And that will let you select another image. Once you have two images selected, you can come up here to X and Y and you can compare these. So you can see this is this one here and this is this one here. And this would be good for if you had a whole bunch of pictures of this woman here and you wanted to see what the others look like next to it to pick the one that you like the best. Now, once you have an image up, you'll notice way over here, there's some little arrows. So I can click on this and what this is gonna do, it's gonna go over to the cat. So we're gonna move, but we're just moving this image here on the right this way as we click on this. So if I click this, it's gonna go through. If I click back, it's gonna go back through the images. It's letting us compare the photos. Now we do have a little zoom module so we can zoom and make these images larger or smaller depending on what we wanna do. Now, if we have multiple images and I'll hold that commander control so we have three images, we can come over here and click on this and now we can compare the three images together. We're gonna to come back and hit the X and Y all right, now we've moved this image over here. This is our select image, and this is our other image over here. You'll notice there's a little white box around this image. That means it's the selected one. I can come over here and select that image, and that's gonna make this image the selected box. I can come down here, and I can still toggle through everything that I want. Once I'm done doing this process, I can come over here and hit done, and we'll go back to the beginning. This little button right here is something that you can click on to recognize faces. So let's say you have a little sister and the little sister's name is Karen and you want Lightroom Classic to identify images by a face, it can do that. It's not something that I ever use, but if it's something that you wanna try, feel free to do it. I'm not gonna waste the time doing it in this set of images because we have a bunch of random photos. All right, so let's go ahead and move on over to the develop module. So we'll go ahead and just select the very first image that we have here, and we're gonna click on develop, voila. We'll make this a little bit bigger. So I'm just hitting command plus. All right, so let's go up here to view. And if you come down here, you'll notice that zoom in, it says command equals, well, command equals and command minus are also command plus and command minus. I'm not sure why they use the equals here, but command minus, command, plus. Now, if you're working on a PC, this would be control plus control minus. There's one more down here called zoom to 100%, which is actually my favorite. But in this case, it is command option zero. And my guess on a PC, it would be control alt zero. So we'll go ahead and hit that quick key. So that's zooming into 100%. And, and what 100% is, is 100% of the image not filling the viewfinder at 100%. So there's a big difference there. In my case, I want it to fill the screen, so we're gonna go ahead and just hit Command minus because I wanna see the whole image. All right, so we are in the develop module of Lightroom Classic. So let's go ahead and we're gonna take a look over here on the right-hand side. We're gonna forget this left-hand side for today. We're just gonna be looking at the items over here. If your basic panel is not open, it's because the little triangle is closed. So to open it, you would go ahead and just click that and it would open up your basic panel. This basic panel is what we call a global adjustment, meaning that when you make something brighter, 
or you change any of these little sliders, it's affecting the whole image. Most images in photography don't really need a global adjustment. And if it does need one, it's just very slight, like it's a little tweak. Because what happens is you don't want to make like a dark area brighter, but then take a highlight area and make it too bright. So the problem is if you make an adjustment and it makes one area look good and another area look bad, it's not an adjustment you want to use. In that case, you're going to want to use what we call a selective adjustment where it just affects a single area. And in photography, most adjustments are selective. Now, the sliders are the same. It's just you need to apply it to a specific area. In the basic panel, you cannot do that. It affects the whole image. Up here, we have that histogram. We talked about the histogram a little bit. It shows you where the data is in your image. It also shows us our shooting settings that we have right here. Up here, we have our shadow clipping button. And over here is our highlight clipping button. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one on by selecting it. You can either hover over it or if you select it, it stays on all the time. I personally hate it. It drives me nuts because all I see is the blue. But what this is showing us is that the dark areas are too dark, meaning we're losing detail that is there. In this case, we have a lot of areas that are getting clipped. Now, what would you do? Well, you can lower the contrast and brighten the image up a little bit until the shadow areas aren't starting to clip that much. We have a little bit left, but that's okay. So we're opening those areas. It's just telling you that it's too dark. We're gonna slide this back over basically to where it was. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one off. Over here, we have our highlight clipping. So this is saying, hey, your highlights are too bright and the highlights show up red. So I'll slide this way over until we start to get it. And you can see right now, now these are clipping it saying, and we've lost all detail. And this image is too bright. And you can see it's all washed out. And this is even here, that's way too bright, but it's not really showing up yet. You can see a little bit in the ring. It shows you, but it's not the most accurate way to do this. So the question is, how do you know when you're making a, an adjustment in photography when you're starting out? And I know this for a fact, is that students don't really know, should an image look like this? Should an image look like this? Or should the image look like this? Well, sometimes it's a personal choice, like what you're after, but just in general basic toning. And that's what we're gonna be trying to achieve is just a general normal, where should this image look good if it was to get printed or go online. So how do you know? Well, the first issue that everybody's gonna be running into is when you're looking at your computer monitor, you're assuming that your computer monitor is accurate. The fact is most computers monitors are not accurate. Some are gonna be really close and some are gonna be really far off. So how do you know if your computer monitor is accurate. Well, mine is calibrated. There's a little device that we can see here. There's two different companies. One is called X-Rite and the other is called Data Color. And they make devices to calibrate your monitor to standards that we use in photography. The two most popular standards in photography are sRGB, which is used on the web, and Adobe RGB, also known as Adobe 1998. They're trying to change it to Adobe RGB or something like that instead of Adobe 1998 because, well, 1998 was a really, really long time ago and it makes no sense of having that because it's gonna be confusing to people. The Adobe RGB color gamut is larger than the sRGB. So therefore, a lot of photographers choose to work in Adobe because that color gamut is the largest and you're gonna have more colors available for your image. There is another one called Profoto and that color gamut is so large that even a 5K monitor can't display it and the human eye can't recognize all the colors that are available. So it kind of really serves no purpose, so I tend to stick in Adobe RGB. It doesn't really matter whether you're using Adobe or Profoto because you can always convert it down to sRGB. 
the process will be the sensors come with software. It runs through a program. It calibrates your monitor. So what you see is exactly what you should be getting. And we know that that standard is accurate because it's calibrated to it. Now you do have to tell programs like Photoshop what color space you have calibrated to that makes a difference. In most cases of people watching this video, they're not gonna have a monitor calibrator. So you're gonna have to take what you see with a grain of salt. The issue is in Lightroom, there isn't a readout panel like in Adobe Photoshop. It's called the info palette and it shows you digitally exactly what your RGB and your K values are. And that makes toning without a calibrated monitor a lot easier. Here we do get the readouts in RGB. So if you notice as I hover over her head and you're gonna be looking right here on the histogram, you'll see that we have red 81.8, green 77.6 and blue of 70.6. And for most of you, you're gonna have no idea what those numbers mean. The easiest thing I can tell you is if all the numbers, meaning the red, the green, and the blue values, if they were all the same. So in this case, we're gonna say 77. If red was 77, green was 77, and blue was 77, you would know that the value that you see is neutral gray. So if we go up here to where it's grayer, these numbers should be closer to the same. So you can see there's 37, 37.8, and 37.6. So it's really, really close to neutral gray because all the numbers are the seven. If I go over the red in her lips, now you're gonna see the red being really high compared to the other values. So now we know that area has a lot of red in it. Another issue that I see is a lot of people who are gamers or play games on their computer turn their brightness way, way, way down so their screen isn't very bright. The problem in photography is luminance value. The luminance value on your computer should be set usually at 120, which is not very bright. However, it's still brighter than what people have. I usually tell people to take their monitor brightness that don't know what they're doing and just set it in the middle, and that should be pretty close. And when you calibrate your monitor, you should never, ever, ever change your brightness value after you've calibrated. It needs to be at that number. You can't change it. So these are all important things that people never think of using when they start getting Lightroom. Yes, there's way, there's a whole lot more into getting accurate color and toning. So histogram, we've got our highlight, we've got our shadows. I'm turning mine off because they drive me nuts. So let's go down right here. This is our cropping tool and we'll get into this later. We're not gonna worry about it now. This is our healing or our cloning. This is for red eye reduction. And if you know how to take photos, you should never have to use that. And this is our new masking. And what masking is, is for making those selective adjustments. And we'll go into this in the next video. Today, we're just gonna stick with the global adjustments. Down here, we have, how do we wanna tone this image? Do we wanna do it in color? Or do we wanna do it in black and white? So in this case, we're gonna choose color. Over here is our color profile. And if you click on that, you'll notice and it says Adobe Color, Adobe Landscape, Portrait, Standard, Vivid. If you remembered in the first video, I was showing you the preference and I said we're gonna use Adobe instead of built into the camera. It doesn't matter really which one you choose. In this case, I just prefer the Adobe. And these are just little adjustments on how your image looks. Adobe Color is just normal. Think of it as normal. Adobe Landscape, and you can see my screen change just a little bit when we do this. So it's going to be more saturated and more contrasty in Adobe Landscape. Portrait and Standard are almost exactly the same. It's gonna be flatter and less color saturation and same thing with Standard. And then you're gonna have Adobe Vivid, which is gonna be super bright and super contrasty. I personally like Standard and Adobe Color. In this case, we'll just do Adobe Color and leave that on it. Over here are your presets. Earlier we showed you presets. And so if we open up presets over here, we've got a whole bunch of presets you could just click, but you can also get your presets over here. And these are just ways to kind of do funky tones to an image. We're not gonna be going over this in the first couple classes. This might be something that I'll do just a video on, 
because I don't think presets for beginning photographers is a good idea because they just click on a button and then they think they're done. You really need to know how to make adjustments. So when you click on one of these, it's not doing anything special. It's just changing these sliders. That's all somebody did to make a preset is adjust these. So anybody could make any one of these by just knowing how to adjust these sliders. The problem is every image is different. And even though you do a preset, you still need to know how to go in and change it. So I think it's helpful if you actually want to really learn how to use the program to learn how to tone first and then use the preset second. Next thing that we have down here is white balance. And so this is, this is the same thing that would be on your camera. So you could do an auto white balance, daylight, shadow, tungsten, fluorescent, whatever you want. If you come over here and you click and look, this is only going to be available if you shot a raw image. If you shot a JPEG image, it might give you three options of auto and custom, but it's going to give you the options of as shot auto and custom. It's not going to give you these other ones. So you can change it a little bit and it actually is helpful even on a JPEG image to get color a little bit more accurate. But in a raw file, you're going to have all these options. And these are just presets, just like they are on the back of your camera. So you can see if I go to tungsten, it's going to give you this really weird color. But the cool thing about this is it lets you change the color after the fact. A raw image is a capture. It's not applying any of the settings like white balance to the image. So you can do it after the fact in a program like this. And so if you accidentally screw something up, you can easily switch it. Usually I'll just go to auto. Auto tends to be a little bit warm in some cases. So in this case, I think it's too warm. So I'm going to go back to as shot, which I think is really um, good in this instance. Now, once you've done a preset, you can further adjust that. And you're going to see this switch to custom when we do it. So this right here will switch to custom when I slide this. So if I want to add a little blue, I can go this way. Notice the custom. If I want to add it and make it a little warm, I can go that way. So you can refine that preset. Down here we have tint. Tint is something that you're rarely going to use. Most of your adjustments are going to be in the temperature up here, which is referring to the Kelvin scale. Down here we have basically adjusting towards green and adjusting towards magenta. The only thing I'm going to tell you is you don't want faces or skin tones to be magenta in your image in photography because magenta is a pain in the neck to deal with and get rid of. So if you have something, you want to try to neutralize that and get that magenta out of the image. You're better off making an image like too green like this than you would be too magenta. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as shot and we're going to start from here. So that's white balance, right? So right here, we do have this little white balance selector. And what that means is if you click on it and then you click on something, it's going to set white. But you can see when it sets white, it changes the color. The problem and the reason I never use it is because your white must actually really be a white without detail. And usually in photography, we don't have that. So it's not something that you ever see me use in this class. I'm actually a big proponent of never using white balance in photography. Next thing that we have down here is tone. And over here we have something called auto. Auto is exactly what you think it is. And you can always click this in the beginning. So I can click this and see what it does. And you can see it made it way too contrasty and way too bright. And this is usually what it does because just like the white balance up here, it has to set a white and it has to set a black. When well, this image, there's no white. So it's making the image too contrasty and too bright. So I don't want that. So I'm going to hit that commander control Z to go back in time. We could also hit reset down here, but that's going to be a global reset of everything. Now, if you do have an adjustment, like in this case, where it's plus with 115, and this works on any of these sliders. So I just made some quick, crazy adjustments so I can show you this. So if you do make adjustments, trying to sometimes slide the sliders right back to zero is, is difficult. So you can reset. Now, there's two different ways to reset. One is you can double click on the word, and that's going to reset just that one slider. Or if you hold the alt, on a PC or the option, you'll notice up here, it says reset tone, and that's gonna reset all the sliders at once. I just like to take a moment to say, the YouTube algorithm really likes it when you watch the whole video, 
you like the video, and you comment on the video. If you're finding the information in any of these videos helpful, if you could please give me a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. If you would like to subscribe and get future videos as they come up, because I'm going to be doing a whole series on Lightroom right here, that would be great as well. So that goes back to the beginning of how you started. So that was double click the word to reset just that slider or alt or option to reset everything up there. Next thing that we have down here is presence and this has texture, clarity, dehaze, vibrance and saturation. Texture is just going to increase the contrast. It's not actually adding texture. It's just making it look like there's more texture to it. Clarity is doing the same sort of thing. It's doing some sharpening in this image instead of contrast. Dehaze is to get rid of haze in the atmosphere. It's actually just softening your image. Vibrance is increasing the brightness and the contrast and saturation is just increasing the color saturation. I am not a big fan of using these in Lightroom in the beginning. I think if you wanna do this at the very end, after you tone the image, that's the best spot to do it. And I'll explain it why. So that is the basic panel. So what I can tell you right now, the best thing that you guys should do is whether you have this image up that you've downloaded or another image on your computer is to go in here and play. You don't need to be doing anything intelligent. I just want everybody to see how things work. If you go to the right, it makes it brighter. If you go to the left, it makes it darker. If you go to the left, it makes your contrast flatter. So contrast is how black your blacks are and how white your whites are. So if you go to the left, it makes your whites grayer and it makes your blacks flatter. If you go to the right, it increases your contrast, making your blacks blacker and your whites whiter. It looks better usually if you go to the right. However, you don't really want to start doing that in the beginning. And I'll explain that when we go into just how to actually tone an image. Highlights, brighter, darker. Shadows, make your shadows brighter, make your shadows darker. Make your whites brighter, make your whites darker. Blacks, make your blacks less black, black. Same thing down here. Increase is towards this direction. Decrease is towards this direction. Do not worry about all this stuff right here. What you want to master is this section. This is the section that matters the most. Come in here and play with this and take some images and try to tone them. Now, once you've made some adjustments, if you want to see what it looked like from before to now, you can come over here on this YY, click on it. And this is going to show you before and after of what your image looks like. Now, there's different ways to view this. So if you come in here and you just start clicking, you'll see it will show you before and after that way, a before and after this way before and after this way and this way. I think this is usually the most helpful. You do have a variety of different ways to view your before and after. You could also come over here and just click on these little symbols as well. When you're done with that, you can click back on the single and it goes back to your original image. I know over here we've got all these other options and you really, really, really want to know what they do. Well, the fact is that what you're going to use 99% of the time are these options up here. So the best thing you can do over the next few days or weeks is practice doing this and trying to get images looking better globally. Remember, don't make something brighter in an area where it makes another area look bad. Well, that's it for today's video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the rest of these options down here on the bottom right hand side. We do have a Facebook group and there's a very specific reason I created this. If you want the information, it's in the description below. But a lot of comments I get, people are asking me questions and I cannot help them because I need to see what the issue is. Facebook allows you to either post an image or a video and it makes it really easy for me to give you the answer to whatever your problem is.